Hello everyone, welcome to the 15th Xamarin Android tutorial. And as mentioned in the previous tutorial, what we're going to be working on is sorting and filtering a list view using Link. Okay? And for those of you that are, might not be familiar with Link, it's native to .NET and it stands for Language Integrated Query. Okay? And it's basically shorthand for SQL writing it inside of, of a language uh, like C Sharp. Okay? So it, it, it provides basically some really, really nice features that you can sort on I enumerals. And for this specific example, it's very useful and in many others it is. So this is just one example that we're going to show in, in Link. And I like to show this because Link is, is something that's used with .NET, but you know, you can use it obviously in Xamarin Android. And this really, really is a good selling point for, for Xamarin that you can use link within within their applications. Okay, so I definitely want to show this and this is just one use of it, okay? So here's what we've been working on. And I've added the feature of searching so that you guys can check it out. So whatever you type in, the list view will be sorted accordingly. Okay, mail or the unknown thing. <laughs> uh, Tom, and right now it's not case sensitive. Okay, so if you want it to be case sensitive, I'll show you how to do that. Basically, it'll be case sensitive at first. And then what I did was I changed it to not be case sensitive. Okay. So either way you want to do it, but here is the finished product that we're going to be working on in this tutorial. Let's go ahead and close this out. All right. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is with our search bar, we're going to want to subscribe to an event. And that's the text change event. So go ahead and find that text change and wire up. That was weird. Wire up your event. Okay. So this, this event will call this method that is subscribed to it. Whenever the text changes, whether the text is getting deleted or it's getting added inside the search bar, this will always get called. Okay. So here's where we actually want to perform our, our link. Okay. So we want it to return a list of friends. All right. And we'll call it searched friends. All right. And this makes sense because we're still going to want to feed our list view adapter. What we do up here initially, we're still going to want it to feed it a list of friends, but this friends is going to be, is going to be a subset of the friend of the main friends. Okay. And Basically, that's going to be because either it's going to have all or less than what this friend does once it's once it's sorted through and searched. Okay, based on our criteria that the user specifies in the text. Okay, so here's how we here's one way to do it. Here's there's a couple of different ways to write link queries, and I'm going to show you one of them. So here's what you do: you go from friend, which friend is not a keyword. Friend is what I can want to call. I can call it F or R whatever I want, but I'll call it friend because it's basically going like a for each friend. Okay. Inside of friends. All right. Where friend, uh, let's get rid of these brackets. Ah, okay. First, don't forget to import link. Okay. So link doesn't come imported automatically. It has to be imported. So system dot link. Okay. Is what you want to import. All right. And that's why when I was typing it here, it kind of didn't really know what I was talking about. So let's try it again. All right. So from friend and friends where friend dot first name dot contains. So we don't want to equal because in a text change event, we want it to kind of filter it. It's, it's not going to equal if we're typing in, you know, Bob, it's, it's going to wait until Bob is exactly equal. So we want to have it a loose kind of search because it's text change search, not search and then click a button. And you guys can always do it differently. If you want to, you know, you can do equals and then you would do, you know, uh, whatever this, whatever the search is going to be, whatever the criteria is. Okay. But we're going to do it with contains. Okay. 
All right, so contains the specified text inside of the search bar. All right, and then we'll do or, and this is just your normal way you specify or, that's still the same, or friend. And then you wanna just keep continuing on all the criteria that you want to be acceptable for it to be searched through, okay? So we're gonna do every criteria, which is the first name, the last name, the age, and the gender, okay? But say if you only want to really based on first name and last name, you don't want to let the user search by age, then you just wouldn't specify that here. Okay, so basically do the same thing. And we'll come down here. Or friend.age contains. And the last one is gender. Friend.gender contains the specified text okay so let's come down here and then this is the last part you're actually going to want to select the friend okay and then what this will do I added the parentheses right there so let's add that here all right so what this will do is basically go through all the friends and friends okay so each one and it'll find anything that where this criteria matches. And if it does, then it selects the friend, okay? And then adds it to our list right here, all right? And this is complaining because it wants it to do two list, okay? So we want to, afterwards, then we want to convert it to a list of friend. And there we go, okay? So that makes sense because this is what we're gonna give it back here. All right, and that's all that's doing. All righty, so let's go ahead and try that out. But the first thing we wanna to wanna to do is now that we have this new list of friends that may or may not contain all of the friends, let's go ahead and set the adapter to the uh, list view. So we, gotta, we want to reinitialize the adapter. And the way we do that is basically we first are going to want to either make this a global variable, okay, and put it up here so that we can use it inside of other methods or we can actually do in an, basically an anonymous method and do it inside of the same variable, or I'm sorry, scope, so that it has the same scope as adapter and then we can call it inside of there, all right? So either way you wanna do it, but I'm just going to probably do it the, the old fashioned way and just make a variable and it's a type friends adapter and it's going to take place of this thing okay so this once again is just we just want to make it global so that we can use it outside of this method right here okay all right so let's change that around now we can use this same adapter inside of here. All right, and then we could have made a new adapter and, and assigned another list view, uh, assigned the list views adapter to that new adapter. That would have been fine as well, but I like to keep as, you know, just some variables that are that are sharing some some code and, you know, it's, it's really just a preference. There's really many ways to do this. Okay, so we got a new one and the context is this. And we all we want to get the same layout, but we want to pass it in the searched friends. Oops. Searched friends. Okay. And the last thing we want to do is we want to reassign the adapter. And that basically essentially refreshes the list view. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure that it's doing what we expect it to do. All right. Let's drop it down. Okay. So it is doing what we want to do, but only kind of. Notice that it's case sensitive. So as soon as if I put Smith in, it doesn't come up, but if I put capital S Smith, 
it will show up, okay? So it's case sensitive, okay? So I'm going to show you how to make it not case sensitive, but if you'd like to keep it case sensitive, then that's the design that you could choose. But I wanna show you how to make it not case sensitive to make it a little bit more of a loose search, okay? But it is working the way we expect in that, in that essence, okay? So, all right, let's go back over here. And this is a good, this is a good moment to show you extension methods, okay? And extension methods is something that's commonly used in C Sharp that's, that does exactly what, kinda, what it says is extends a method, okay? So it takes a method and it adds another parameter or adds another signature to it, okay? So first let's go ahead and notice how contains, when you call upon it, it shows three different different signatures, okay? So you can send it three different uh, kinds of parameters and, and based on that, it'll do certain things, okay? So just wanted to have you guys notice that, okay? So before, now when we're done, we're just gonna have four. We're gonna extend it to have another signature, okay? So let's go ahead and create a new class. And we'll call it extension, ext methods, okay? All right, and the way that you call it, or the way that you create an extension method, we'll first make this a static class. All right, the way that you would do this is you first wanna make sure that it's static and that's gonna return a bool, okay? Cause, because contains returns a bool and we wanna make sure that we name it contains and we wanna make sure, this is very important, that this is called, okay? So this string, which means we're extending on this string property its contains method. Okay, so that's all it's doing and we will call that source. Okay, so we won't actually call this in our contains when we actually call it. This will be this. This is what this source dot contains. So that, that'll be this guy. So whenever we do first name dot contains, this will be first name or last name dot contains. This will be last name. So this is what we're calling it upon. Okay, and then the next parameter is actually going to be our first parameter. Okay, so this is to check. This is the string that we're gonna check against. And this is gonna be the msearch.txt, okay? What the user is actually putting in, okay? And the last thing we're gonna need is a string comparison enumeration, okay? And we'll call it comparison type. All right, and we simply just want to return, remember source dot, source is basically the gonna be the first and the last name, the age or the gender in this in this case. And index of to check, which is the string that we're checking to see if it contains. And we're gonna give it the comparison type that is specified by the user. Okay? And if it's greater than or equal to zero. And what this is saying is index of basically returns the first the in the zeroth index of it. So if you go into here it should give you a little more information or perhaps not, but basically it's it's just if it's if you do call index of then on a string, then what's going to happen if it's greater than or equal to zero? That means that this contains something inside of this string, okay? And that's all that's doing. And that's exactly what we want contains to do, okay? But we're specifying the comparison type, which we're going to specify over back in our main activity to be not case sensitive, okay? Because right now contains doesn't have, or is case sensitive by default, and there's no parameter to give it, to say, hey, I don't care about case. And there's a few different ways to do this, but I felt that this was a good moment to go ahead and explain extension methods and really emphasis on them right now, okay? So this is just a, just a good way to do it. All right, so we're all done with that. We'll go ahead and close out. And if everything is good, we should see Four, yeah, so remember there was three, now it's four. And the fourth one you see is now our own custom method for string, okay? So we've extended the contains method on the string uh, type, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Now we already have the string, the first parameter, but we're gonna need the second, which in our case is going to be 
a string comparison. And then we'll do ordinal. And then we'll want to ignore case. Okay. So it's saying, hey, we don't care about the case, you know, don't worry about it. And let's go into. All right. And looks like it's giving us an error because the text got erased. Okay. So that wasn't a string. We we're trying to send it an edit text and it was like, no way I'm not taking that. All right. So let's go ahead and do that for the other methods, the other contain methods. Do it here, do it there, do it there. There we are. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and run this and make sure that everything is working in the way that we expect it to. And what should happen now is it should be a little bit more of a loose search where the it won't be case sensitive that you know capital B or capital under under case B under under case B will, will be the same. We'll, we'll, it'll treat it the same way, not differently. All right, so yeah, Bob. So you have uppercase and then you have lowercase and it doesn't act any differently. So that's exactly what we wanted in this case, okay? Now, remember last time it was uppercase, Smith only worked, now Smith works. So it's doing exactly what we expect it to do, okay? So that is wonderful. Let's go ahead and close out of this. All right, and this is just good because a lot of times the users, you know, we might have hundreds or maybe even thousands or, you know, who knows how many, how many, how many rows of, of whatever data that we have in here in our own applications. And this just provides a really simple way to find the data that they're looking for and not have to scroll and scroll and scroll for for so for so many seconds to find what it was looking for, you know. And this is just one way to kind of remedy that, so in a, in a very easy way. And it was a good way to, to emphasize emphasize on link and show that how easy it is that we can go in and 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 implement that. So I hope this makes sense to you. If you're used to SQL or any kind a of of like relational databasing and stuff, you should see this as, as, it, as it is pretty, the from, the where, the select, that it, it should come a little bit as second nature. Or even if you use the for each loop, you know, it's somewhat similar to that for me. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with this. And this is just one way, but a really useful thing that you can use in .NET to, to give uh, your, your Xamarin.Android some oomph, you know, so definitely useful. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to basically not filter out, but just filter data by ascending, descending order, depending on what they want to sort by. Okay. Cause that's also another important thing that users usually tend to look for. Okay. So we'll use, we'll use link in somewhat the same fashion, but we'll do a few different things to, to, to further go over link and, you know, just show you guys some more cool tricks. All right. As always, thanks for watching, guys.